Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dumbass Flipping Out here, and today I was gonna try. I was, I'm gonna do something a wee bit different. Um, I'm just gonna read to you guys uh, some creepy pastas. And if you guys don't like creepy pastas, just click away now or something. Anyway, um, this uh creepy pasta is called The Shadows of Samuel Craven. It's rated 8.2 out of 10 stars, and um, let's go ahead and begin. Oh, uh, anyway, I wanted to do this because um. Just to celebrate me starting out last, it's gonna be a long, long series because it's kind of scary as hell. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and start reading. The Shadows of Samuel Craven does not say who it was written by. In the sleepy town of Windarm, a street where no one goes, a child of wondrous prying was dead in and crooked pose. His name was Samuel Craven, a boy no older than ten, sneaking out from the safety of his home, a reluctant one then. The breeze of the night engulfed him as he ran free and clear to his doom, to a place which never existed, but he'd found it, no less, in his room. At night the shadows would scurry and paint pictures of street on his wall. As he'd lie on his bed and observe a place where children stood tall. Each night, the pictures grew stronger as silvers of dark made the scene. A street of cobble and houses, glowing windows, thatched roofs, roofs, and oak beams. On his wall, shadowed children would scamper, praying, playing late and loud as they pleased. While Samuel lay there in envy, of the place he so wanted to be, for his parents seemed strict and distant, far removed from the freedom he yearned, and of course Samuel wished for an instance where the rules of grown-ups could be spurned. Night upon night he was beckoned by the children playing tag on the wall, and the rules of his, pa of his parents rang harshly in, in his ears and his soul and him all. On the fifth night of the picture froze sharply, and the chill and the shadows of children turned round to face Samuel Craven with wide grins in place, made of dark and of light, which was drowned. Come with us, Samuel, they whispered. You can play with us now in our street, and you never need worry about growing ups again, for here parents and children shall meet. Young Samuel did not have to answer, for he leapt from his bed with glee, drew the wall where empty eyes watched him, open-handed and whispered, Be free. As the thin shadowed hands of the children grabbed his own and pulled him within, the world turned gray to poor Samuel, and his vision began to dim. Welcome home, my dear little boy, said a voice cracked with age, wheezed and thin. And his sight was encroached by the darkness. Samuel saw what had spoken to him. A figure stood at the end of the street, something tall and spindly of limb, wearing rags of grey drifted fabric, in the absence of life there within. Its eyes were putrid and glassy, and its mouth gaped with rotten lament. Against those who against those with joy and children and of people and of time sp misspent. Come closer, dear Samuel, do not be afraid, for I am seeking little nothing more than to keep you away from gr the grown-ups. Of what world you have found such a bore? Look at the children who stay here, said the figure with bony hands raised, and as Samuel shuddered with a chill in the air, he knew the grave choice he had made. For the children played not, so to speak, or were frozen in crooked positions, like, scare like scarecrows warding off the unwanted. The figure's prized acquisitions. Mouth stitched tightly in place, eyes pleading and ears strained to listen. And a shrouded, vagabond figure walked amongst the Dundalk children. They too once wished to run far away from those who were old and stern, and of course are granted that wish by making shadowed statues of them. The vagabond moved even closer, and Samus saw in its round, opaque, opaque eyes, there was nothing of love about them, only pain and a world of demise. 
as its rotten cough upon garments ruffled quickly in the bleak night air. Samuel turned to face his bedroom, running fast to the safety held there. But his movies, not his movies, what the hell, but his movements were quickly restricted by the cracks and creaks all around. Of the hands of petrified children, shadowed fragments of life and now death bound. Scared little Samuel struggled and cried out as loud as he could, but quickly his screams were muffled by fingers like rigged worked wood. Now is the time, said the vagabond, showing his teeth, white and bled, while scissored hands gripped the boy in place, the figure held needle and thread. Dating it in front, darting in front of that small Samuel, the needle glistened with delight, and the children forced a smile on his face with their hands withered in sight. As the fingers pulled at the corners of his mouth and prodded inside, Samuel climbed in desperate terror, tasting charcoal and rancid skin insi inside. The vagabond now simply reveled, so he pierced helpless Samuel's top to lip, pulling needles to skin and followed by thread before laughing and gargling on spit. Conus now took young Samuel as his eyes began to fade, like the other children around him, life and hope reneged. I will seal your lips and take your light, said the vagabond, holding the needle, and add you to my own gaggle of souls filled with hate for those who are feeble. As the needle hovered and danced, terror, terror streamed down Samuel's face. Terror's tears, wow, tears streamed down Samuel's face to be back in his cozy bedroom. Fine, his steps and simple retrace. That was all he could think of. But now, nothing more could be done, for as his skin turned to shadow and his eyes began to burn. The vagabond stared at it intently, spit drooling from open gap lips, and with one thrust forward, the needle drove straight to extinguish the child's heart by eclipse. Howls of pain and anguish cut through the cold, darkened street, but it was not young Samuel who yelled in pain, it was a vagabond who had to retreat. For standing shoulder to shoulder, dragging the figure with all their might, were Samuel's parents, emboldened by their son's cries for help in the night. They pulled at the creature's limbs, knocking needle from sordid hand as the shadowed children creeped forward, following the master's command. Take the light, children. Oh, fuck. Take the light now, ch my children, said the vagabond, seething with hate. These grown ups must be punished. Sit their lips and seal their fate. Samuel lay on the cobble, crying and desperate for home, as the Bonabon drew both his parents to the ground next to their son. They cut out the boy's head softly and whispered, Don't be afraid, as the shadowed children surrounded, open-eyed with fingers like blades. But looking at young, helpless Samuel, something stirred in his shadowed face, memories of hope and of love, of a forgotten and once lived in place. The the memory of family came flooding, like a tide of bitter regret, of sleeping in darkness for centuries, and being snatched from warm, comfy beds. So did the children cracked onward, as the one vagabond, closed and tight, yet not to assist the capture, but to stop him with all of their might. A sea of shadow child fingers pulled and clawed at the rags of the vagabond, once their master, who'd sewn each of their sitting in gags. Samuel's parents did not need to ask for one more second of time and grabbed their son as quickly as they could, fleeing the scene for the crime. As the figure tore down his children, each one of their stitches pulled out. He rasped and screeched with venom at the family who'd caused such a rout. His horde of children lay on the floor, wide-eyed and mouths ripped open. As he flung himself towards a tree, they left the street empty and broken, panting and rushing and he heaving. Samuel's parents flew to the edge, of where the street now ended, and bedroom made safety its place. The vagabond soon quickly followed as the family lived within, to the house and the room they had chosen, where the son of plants had been. As the figure drew ever closer, a seating wretch the night, Samuel's mother looked to the corner and simply turned on the light. No shadows were there to be feared of, no vagabond, children, or street. Nothing which spoke of the danger which their boy had taken to meet. The years moved on with Samuel, though he would never forget his mistake. Running from those who loved him, 
to strangers who promise mate. But now young Samuel is grown up. His daughter is asleep in her room. The shadows and whispers sail over from the street to Vagabond's tomb. Wow, that was a very interesting uh, creepypasta. And it says here that it's made by Michael Whitehouse. And wow, that was actually quite interesting. I'm going to go ahead and read up some of the comments. Just give me a couple seconds, you guys. Whoa, whoa, too far, too far. Oops. Uh, uh, where the hell are the comments? Oh, they're loading. Loading, loading. Uh, eh. Oh, here we go. Interesting and very eerie. But some of the rhymes were really stretching it. Wow, I'm still reading like I'm rhyming. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, but anyway, my personal comment is I liked it, but just like child and where was it? Oh, let me find that one sentence that really, really gave me a pain in the ass to read. Well, I thought it was really weird the way he set it up. Uh, my children, creatures, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Where is it? I can't. I don't seem to find it. Uh, blah blah blah. Eh. It's not here, but anyway, I thought this was a very interesting creepypasta for you guys. Mostly because you guys are young. And you guys, most of you guys are pretty young, and I was thinking maybe you guys would enjoy this. To remember not to trust other people. And don't trust strangers, basically. This is what the creepypasta is saying. And yeah, I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed this creepypasta. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the pictures that came with it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.